We know that a calorie deficit is required for significant fat loss, but how much of a calorie deficit should we be in? Should we eat in a larger deficit to lose weight faster, or is it better to be in a smaller deficit to lose weight at a slower rate? In this video, we will explore how fast weight loss should be to maximize fat loss and muscle retention. The first important principle to understand is the concept of energy balance. Most people watching this channel are probably aware of this already, but it is worth repeating for any new viewers. Essentially, this is the fundamental concept of weight loss and weight gain. In the most simple sense, it is how many calories we consume versus how many calories we expend. If we eat more calories than we expend, we will gain weight. If we eat less calories than we expend, we will lose weight. And if we eat the same amount of calories as what we expend, we will maintain weight. So for weight loss over time, we need to be in this category here, a calorie deficit. However, a calorie deficit is not a single amount of calories. Rather, we could be in a smaller or larger deficit, depending on how much we eat. For example, let's say that we expend around 2,500 calories per day. Whether we eat 2,400 calories or 2,000 calories, we will be in a deficit in both instances. But clearly 2,400 calories is only a 100 calorie deficit, while 2,000 calories is a 500 calorie deficit. So what effect does this have on weight loss? Well, both will still result in weight loss over time, although the rate of weight loss will be different. A smaller deficit, like our 100 calorie deficit for example, will result in slower weight loss, while a larger deficit, like our 500 calorie deficit example, will result in faster weight loss. So the question is, which is best for fat loss? Losing weight faster or slower? Before we explore this topic, we first need to understand another key concept, and that is the difference between weight loss versus fat loss. Weight loss, like we have been talking about so far in this video, refers purely to body weight, as shown by numbers on the scale. This encompasses all tissues of the body, including muscle, fat, bones, organs, water, and more. So if our total body weight reduces, that is called weight loss. However, weight loss alone doesn't tell the entire story. For aesthetic performance and health goals, we aren't as concerned about what our body weight is, we care about our body composition, more specifically, how much muscle versus fat we have. We want more muscle mass and less body fat over time. So really, weight loss isn't the overall goal. Fat loss is the overall goal. Fat loss is achieved with simultaneous weight loss and muscle mass retention, or even an increase in muscle mass if possible. So throughout this video, we aren't just going to discuss weight loss, we also need to consider muscle retention too. Before deciding what rate of weight loss is best, we should first understand what slow versus fast weight loss even means. While there is no exact definition for these terms, we will come up with some working definitions for this video. So for this video, we will call a slow rate of weight loss as less than around 0.5% of body weight per week, a moderate rate of weight loss as around 0.5 to 1% of body weight per week, and a fast rate of weight loss as anything more than 1% of body weight per week. So for this video, these are some general working definitions so that we have somewhat of a reference point. So let's now discuss how fast weight loss should be for best fat loss outcomes. Losing weight at a faster or slower rate each has their own unique benefits. So we will discuss how our rate of weight loss influences multiple different factors. The first factor to consider is the time frame that we want to lose weight within. Obviously, a faster rate of weight loss will allow us to reach our goals faster, while a slower rate of weight loss will take longer. Going back to our example from earlier, this trainee in a 100 calorie deficit may lose weight at a rate of only around 0.1 kilograms or around 0.2 pounds per week. While this trainee in a 500 calorie deficit will lose weight at a faster rate of around 0.5 kilos or just over one pound per week. So to lose a total of 5 kilos, it would take the first person around 50 weeks to achieve, while it would only take around 10 weeks for the other individual. This might be relevant for some people who want to be in a specific condition at a certain time and need a more aggressive deficit to achieve such outcomes. Whereas those who don't have a specific time frame 
may not need to worry about losing weight within a specific time frame. The next consideration for our rate of weight loss is muscle retention, or potentially muscle growth. It is pretty clear that a calorie deficit is not the most anabolic environment compared with maintenance calories or a surplus. However, muscle mass can still be maintained or even increased during a deficit, depending on our rate of weight loss. This recent meta-analysis explored the evidence on the effects of a calorie deficit on changes in muscle mass. This graph shows the general trend that was found between the magnitude of the deficit and changes in muscle mass. As we can see, a smaller deficit of less than around 500 calories per day tended to result in a retention of muscle mass, and even slight gains in some cases. However, deficits of greater than around 500 calories per day tended to result in slight muscle loss, and the greater the deficit beyond this point, the greater the risk of muscle loss becomes. So it seems that when losing weight at a slower rate, trainees are more likely to retain their muscle mass and therefore also increase the proportion of fat loss. So when looking at the diet in isolation, a slower rate of weight loss will probably result in better muscle retention and greater fat loss, resulting in a superior overall physique. So although a slower rate of weight loss probably results in greater muscle retention, it will also prolong the time spent in a calorie deficit. And as we know, a calorie deficit is not the most anabolic environment for lifters to build muscle in, which is usually a primary goal for most people focused on physique development. So basically, a faster rate of weight loss means that you will get to your weight loss goals faster, which also means you can get back to maintenance or surplus calories sooner. This means that we can be in a more anabolic food environment sooner and likely see greater muscle growth. If we extrapolate this over multiple years of bulking and cutting cycles, this would mean that we can spend significantly more time in a surplus compared with a deficit, which will likely yield superior long-term muscle growth. However, this is more relevant for those who aim to absolutely maximize every ounce of muscle growth over their lifting career and go through planned bulking and cutting cycles, which not everyone does. Next, let's move on to a more practical consideration, and that is adherence. For many people, the exact rate of weight loss isn't really a concern, rather it is simply adhering to a calorie deficit in the first place that is the biggest barrier to weight loss. That being said, the magnitude of the calorie deficit can have a significant effect on adherence. For the most part, a slower rate of weight loss is usually easier to stick to for an extended period of time. This is because a smaller deficit is simply a less invasive change. Slower weight loss will minimize hunger and lethargy, increasing the chances of sticking to the diet. On the other hand, a faster rate of weight loss will usually be more difficult to adhere to. This is because it will result in greater hunger throughout the day and probably a greater level of tiredness and lethargy. This may also have carryover effects, making your workouts more difficult and less productive and may also impact your everyday life more significantly. However, it should also be noted here that a very slow rate of weight loss may inhibit diet adherence to some extent too. This is because if you were trying to lose weight too slowly, it may take too long to see any significant results. This may decrease motivation to stick with a diet, since you might not be seeing the visual changes that you were hoping for. And instead, you might just lose interest in the diet altogether at some point after an extended period of time with no results. Moving on to another practical consideration regarding our rate of weight loss is what I like to call lifestyle flexibility. This refers to the compatibility of your diet with your life outside of the training and nutrition world. People are not robots who just eat and train. We are also involved with social events, our families, work, school, and many other important things in our life. So inevitably, some of these other commitments will likely clash with our diet practices at some point. Now, if we are losing weight at a slower rate, and therefore a slightly higher calorie intake, we will have more wiggle room to stick to our calorie deficit during social events that involve food. For example, if we know that we have a social dinner one evening, maybe you just eat less calories in your other meals during the day and save more calories for dinner. This way you can still stick to your target calorie intake without having to go off track. However, if your calories are lower, it may be more difficult to enjoy the social dinner without going over your calorie target. 
If you exhibit some self-control, you may still end up in a net calorie deficit throughout the day, or more importantly throughout the week, but this will probably be viewed as a failure to hit your target, rather than a success that you were still in a deficit. And this may be demotivating and cause a lack of adherence further on down the line. And the last consideration to discuss is the change in our habits and behaviours. When eating at roughly maintenance calories to maintain a healthy body weight, we develop certain habits over time. These eating habits are largely subconscious, meaning we don't really need to put much effort or willpower into doing them. They will be influenced by many different factors, such as where you live, your access to food, socioeconomic status, your upbringing, your social life, other people you live with, and much, much more. Hopefully throughout our life, we develop good general training and nutrition habits to help us maintain a healthy and physical lifestyle. Now getting back on topic, these eating habits are ingrained in our everyday lives to some extent. So whenever we have a new goal, it can be difficult to break old habits and adopt new behaviours very quickly. So if we decide to lose weight and enter a calorie deficit, we must now change our everyday eating behaviours to eat less calories. And our rate of weight loss that we choose will have a large influence on how difficult it is to change our behaviours. Because a larger deficit means we need to eat less food, it requires bigger changes to our habitual lifestyle, while a smaller deficit only requires small changes. So, in general, a slower rate of weight loss will be easier to implement from a habitual and behavioural perspective, while a faster rate of weight loss will be more difficult. So, now we've discussed how our rate of weight loss may influence various different factors. However, our own personal status will also influence what rate of weight loss we may decide to implement. Let's now discuss what factors may influence this decision. The first and probably most important is our overall physique goals. While we all generally want to build muscle and lose body fat, the magnitude of this is different for everyone. Some people may want to absolutely maximise muscle growth over time, while others may prefer to just be generally muscular, lean and athletic to live a healthier lifestyle. This will influence what nutritional strategies we adopt to achieve our desired goals. For example, a physique athlete may want to maximise every ounce of muscle growth potential by spending more time in a surplus, while a general population gym goer may just want to try and adhere to somewhat of a deficit to maintain a slightly leaner physique. So the physique athlete may want to be slightly more assertive with their deficit so that they can get back to a surplus as soon as possible. While the general population individual doesn't really have a time frame they need to be in a certain condition by, so they can probably be more relaxed and achieve weight loss over a longer period of time. So based on the theory we discussed in the previous section, the exact rate of weight loss you choose will be somewhat determined by our physique goals. Another individual variable which may influence our rate of weight loss is whether we are a male or female. There seems to be some slight differences in body composition changes when comparing the two genders. This was established in this meta-analysis, which explored the evidence on body composition changes during weight loss. It was found that females tended to be able to retain and even continue to gain muscle mass during a prolonged calorie deficit, while males generally lost muscle mass. As we can see, all studies found that males lost some amount of muscle tissue, while most studies found females actually gained a small amount of muscle tissue. This suggests that females can probably get away with a faster rate of weight loss without seeing as much, if any, muscle loss. While males may need to be more conservative with their rate of weight loss to preserve as much muscle tissue as possible. Another determining factor is our current body fat level that we start the diet from. In general, the higher our body fat, the easier it is to lose weight, and the more likely we are to retain muscle mass. On the other hand, a leaner individual will probably find it more difficult to lose weight, and are probably at a higher risk of muscle loss. This is probably because as we get leaner and leaner, each additional kilogram of weight is more and more of a stress on the body. If the body recognises that we are burning through energy stores, aka body fat, without much energy stores left, it is probably seen as more of a threat to survival. However, if we have a high amount of body fat and we lose weight, 
it probably isn't a major threat to the body since there is still plenty of stored energy remaining. So in practical terms, trainees are probably able to handle a faster rate of weight loss when they are at a higher body fat level, as it will probably be easier from a practical perspective and also more likely to be able to retain muscle mass. However, a slower rate of weight loss may be more suitable as a trainee gets leaner since it will probably be more difficult and we are at a higher risk of muscle loss. And the last primary factor determining our rate of weight loss is our dieting experience. Dieting has its own skill set and we usually get better and better at it over time. This is because we find strategies that work well specifically for us, making it more practical to stick to. So an experienced dieter may be able to handle a slightly faster rate of weight loss because they know exactly what helps them stick to the diet effectively. However, a trainee wanting to enter a planned calorie deficit for the first time may want to start conservatively to avoid failing the diet altogether and having a negative relationship with weight loss. So based on all of this information, let's now discuss some practical recommendations. Essentially, we need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. However, the goal is not really weight loss, it is more specifically about fat loss. This means we want to lose body weight, but also preserve muscle mass too. Weight loss can be achieved with a larger calorie deficit, resulting in faster weight loss over time, or it can be achieved with a smaller deficit, resulting in slower weight loss over time. The exact rate of weight loss we decide to implement will be dependent on many different variables. As a general summary, here are how these factors determine what we decide to implement. A slower rate of weight loss will be beneficial to retain muscle mass, make the diet more practical, and help with behavior change. While a faster rate of weight loss will allow us to get to our weight loss goals faster, minimize the time spent in a calorie deficit, and therefore allow us to get back to a surplus or maintenance calorie sooner. So really, there is no best or worst rate of weight loss to choose from. Rather, it will depend on what you prefer. This will be based on your specific physique goals and lifestyle, whether you are a male or female, your current body fat level, and your dieting experience. Therefore, trainees can implement whatever rate of weight loss suits them best. And lastly, it should also be noted that you don't have to stick to a linear rate of weight loss. You can decide to increase or decrease the magnitude of the deficit based on how you are feeling and responding to the diet. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.